So I think one way, one fundamental aspect of philosophy as is ordinarily understood as, is of uh, trying to become aware of my of the intellectual or mental or uh, assumptions that we have when we do anything. Uh, and, and it's a great help in philosophy. It's not always necessary, but it's a great help to have someone else to converse with about it, to mutually examine our assumptions or, or beliefs and to see if we're being consistent, to see if we're being uh, honest, to see if we just are holding on to opinions for which there is no justification and uh, trying without fear to become aware of our opinions in, in case they may even be false and being not afraid to step back from our own thoughts, from our own assumptions, become aware of them. And in that sense, philosophy is a fundamental activity for, for the health of any discipline, of any enterprise of human life, in the sense of the philosophy of, the philosophy of a religious, of a, of a culture, of a, of a whole world, like a world view, like, say, the modern world view, how we think of reality, how we think of truth, how we think of what's important, our values, our, our assumptions about what, what human being is, our assumptions about what's good or bad, to become aware of them is a, is a philosophical enterprise. And it takes a certain uh, philosophical temperament, which you might call it that, a, a kind of a courage to not be afraid to become aware that what you're thinking is based on certain opinions you may have, which may or may not be true. So the, the philosophy of that is the ultimate view, the ultimate view of reality, of values, of any human enterprise would be one <clears throat> pretty good definition of philosophy. Then there's all kinds of philosophy of. There's a philosophy of science, there's a philosophy of mathematics, looking at the basic roots of with mathematical theories. What, what does, is mathematics, for example, tell us about reality out there? Or does it tell us just about how our minds work? Uh, do our minds project onto reality and make it what we think it is? Or do we actually, are we actually able to see reality as it is in itself? This is a very important question. Uh, the philosophy of art, philosophy of language, for example. How does language come about is one thing, but what, is, what, what does language really tell us? Or can we think? Does language think for us? Does, is there a whole world view, a view of reality that is embedded in language that we have, or particularly in each language? Is there an English language world view? Is there a world view of Chinese language? Um, these are all fascinating, interesting questions, and not all of them can be answered by our paradigm, our assumption of what, what knowledge is, which is based on scientific investigation. Um, so when people think of philosophy, they may be thinking of those terms. They may be thinking of it simply, of course, quite, quite importantly, academically, as a, since philosophy has existed in the Western world, at least anyhow, since uh, Plato and before, but goes way back in, in other words and other terms, it's not always been called philosophy. But there's always been some form of thinking like this or attempt to understand and throughout the history of our culture and of other cultures as well, uh, there have been philosophers, people who have tried to understand these things, to raise these questions of ultimate nature. And uh, some of them have been, many of the great philosophical minds have produced views of reality that have been so exciting, so interesting, so, so transformational, so uh, full of hope or full of... Uh, revelation of some a revolution of some kind that whole societies have been based on that that revolutions have appeared and that and that and that means these philosophers the study of these philosophers of the past some of the great ones show us a great deal about how our own world has shaped and formed because of certain ideas philosoph philosophical ideas that have been so extraordinary so exciting for people 
that this changed the life of a culture, changed the life of a whole of the whole civilization. So, in that sense, philosophical ideas, the study of philosophical ideas in the past, if it's undertaken in a in a certain spirit, which we have to discuss, is a real important, a very essential part of education. Whether you're good at philosophy, a academically or not, one way or the other, we need to be aware of the role of ideas in human life. And it's a tremendous role. Uh, it's ideas that make people act, ultimately. It's ideas that have told us we need to please God. It's ideas that have told us we need to master uh, nature. Uh, uh, we need to not believe in these idols or whatever we, science says. It's ideas that have told us that certain kind of form of society is more just and fair than another form. It's ideas about what a human nature is, what we are. The idea that we are merely biological beings in the, use, in the modern sense of the term that have evolved mechanically is an idea and it excited people. A Darwinian idea. Is it a true idea? Well, that's, that is a question. And science which proposes this idea ultimately cannot be the judge because it comes out of science. And out of science, you can't prove science. It's uh, it's a circular. So it's done. if you show that just science can't prove itself by scientific methods, then you really have to say, well, how will you know? That means you've got to step back from science. And what in my mind, how can I step back and look at the assumptions of science? That's a great philosophical question.